Welcome to HP Tuner's Ford Gen 1 Coyote Training Part 25. In this training module, we're going to take a look at how we can use our driver demand table to shape our drive-by-wire throttle response. So this is going to allow us to change the relationship between our pedal and our plate in our drive-by-wire system so we can dial in the response how we'd like. We're going to have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our driver demand table to shape our pedal plate relationship in our drive-by-wire throttle control. So essentially what we're going after here is changing our throttle response. Now, if we edit our drive-by-wire tables properly, then we'll get the response that we'd like. Ideally, we'd like to go after a linear pedal plate relationship so we have a more fine resolution or control over our throttle modulation to our power output of our engine. This is especially important if we have, let's say, a supercharger installed on our Mustang. We don't want to go in and have a unlinear pedal plate relationship where if we're pushing down the pedal, we get the plate moving twice the ratio of the pedal. That can make it dangerous to drive, unpredictable to drive, especially if you're trying to modulate power if you're going through a corner, for example, very easily it'll spin out the car and uh, cause it to lose control. So. We're gonna go over what we need to look for and changes that we might potentially wanna make between our driver demand table to shape our actual response in our throttle control. So the first thing I wanna do here is find the tables that we wanna go and talk about here in this tutorial. So we're first gonna go in here, I have a 2013 Mustang six speed file example open. Doesn't really matter which calibration file you're looking at, they're all going to be referencing the driver demand and the torque tables pretty much a similar way across all of the Gen 1 Coyote applications. So if we go up here into our engine tab, and we move from our general over here into our torque management. And then we go here into driver demand. We're going to find that we have our desired torque, which is our driver demand table. We have a normal and a terrain sport. Now, I typically make the normal and terrain sport tables identical in values if I'm editing them just so that it can source whatever, which one it's sourcing here. It's going to have the same type of pedal plate relationship that I'm going after. It's not gonna change between either mode of driving. Well, technically, you could, if you have a sport mode enabled or a, a, the ability to enable that on your Mustang, then you could technically go in and tune your sport mode to have a little bit more throttle response compared to your normal driving mode. So if you have that ability to do that, again, you could go after that in your sport table. But I typically edit them the same just to get things sorted out. And then uh, if you'd like, you can always tweak the other table here. But this is going to be what drives our drive-by-wire throttle system. Now we talked about this in our torque tuning videos so or previous tutorial, looking at the torque tables and the relationship they had to the driver demand. So we know that the driver demand table here takes a look at the accelerator pedal. This is the movement of the Excel pedal that we put our foot on in the car. It translates that into a torque request. That torque request is fed into the airflow and speed density model and into the throttle body data, and that translates into something called air load. Now, air load, if we take a look here, is fed into our torque tables. We see this is going to be engine load or also known as air load. This is fed in here. So we put in the air load calculated from our pedal request. It looks up a specific amount of torque in our table here. Then it goes into the inverse table. It looks up that specific amount of torque and it turns it into what's called a desired load. So ideally, we'd like to find that air load is equal to desired load. That means that we have low IPC wheel torque errors and our drive-by-wire throttle response is going to be doing pretty much what we want. Now we can change the pedal plate relationship. Once we've calibrated the torque tables as we outlined in our previous tutorial, we can start to change our driver demand table to change how we have our pedal plate relationship. So this is going to be our pedal and then you can think of the torque tables here, the out, this is going to be our plate movement, so pedal plate. And we can tweak that relationship so that we're able to get different response characteristics out of our drive-by-wire performance. So the driver demand table here is going to be something that we might potentially want to change. Now, there is some other additional things here I wanna talk about uh, that we can get out of the way. If we jump here, let's close this out. If we jump into airflow, and then we jump into electric throttle, and we take a look under electric throttle, we're gonna have a area called pedal. And then here, we're gonna have a pedal position watt start, pedal position watt end. We can see the values here are 501 to start and 542 to end. What this is going to do is essentially translate us from a closed loop type of drive-by-wire throttle control system, looking at the relationship between our throttle movement and the engine torque 
and then it can kick us into an open loop type of situation where it no longer tries to reference the throttle angle to the torque production of the engine and it can essentially do whatever it, it, it's going to like within the torque and plate relationship so we can get an unlinear type of characteristic. So the way this is set up here, these are going to be based on ADC counts which we take a look here in our table, we're finding this is going from 15 to 542 in our accelerator pedal position. So this is scaled in this ADC count, which is an analog digital count. This is older programming language from earlier generation Ford PCM programming. Um, this is going to be zero to 600 in terms of the scale of your throttle movement. So your actual, or your pedal movement, I'm sorry. So your pedal goes between zero and 100%. So if we're off the pedal all the way, that's zero. 100% on the pedal, that's going to be 100%. This translates that 0 to 100% type of range movement into a 0 to 600 ADC count. So what we're going to find here, the table ends at 542. If we take a look back here into our air... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.